Good morning, Friendship Baptist Church. On this last Sunday of the month of June, we are thankful to see another day, and we thank God for all that he's done for us. For those that have had birthdays in the month of June, praise God that you were able to see another birthday, and we just celebrate happy birthday for with you, and that God blesses you with many, many more. Our announcements are as follows. Next Sunday on July, on July 5th will be Holy Communion, so please make sure as you tune in at 10 a.m. that you prepare yourself with the sacraments of, of at least bread or, or a cup of juice to, um, for Holy Communion, and that will be next Sunday, July 5th, on the first Sunday. Also, please make sure as our numbers are rising within our state that you pay attention to DHEC and CDC guidelines and continue to wash your hands for a minimum of 20, 30 seconds and that you practice social distancing and the other um, sanitizing guidelines and, and recommend that you wear a mask um, as you travel or as you um, interact with others. Also, uh, we will have uh, the class of 2020, our Friendship Baptist Church graduates, will um, be featured and honored along with Second Baptist Church graduates in a virtual salute to the class of 2020. And that will be, um, you can tune in at 1015 immediately after this service, our service, you can tune in 1015 um, to www.secondbaptistaken.org. That is their website and click on the live services, Bible uh, live services and Bible study tab. And the keynote speaker will be Dr. Jill Biden. Biden, she is the wife of former vice president and presidential uh, candidate Joe Biden. So um, that will be this, at, this, this morning at 1015 in a live stream worship service where our class of 2020 high school and college graduates will be honored along with Second Baptist um, class of 2020 um, high school and college graduates as well. Also this Wednesday will be virtual Bible study through Microsoft Teams, and that will be at 6 p.m. on this Wednesday, um, virtual Bible study through Microsoft Teams. So please make sure that you uh, tune in and join us for a um, Bible study interaction and discussion. Have a great week. Stay safe and, and, and pray that God continues to bless us and heal us. Thank you. Good morning, Children's Church. Today's lesson is talking about the body of Christ and about growth and witnessing. And so um, today we're going to talk about how you think about witnessing and you think that's something that children can't do, that that's something for um, missionaries or older people to do. But actually, as kids, 12 and under and even older kids, you can still witness. You can tell the good news about Christ. And, the, and Jesus tells us in the Bible, in Mark 16, chapter 15, verse, to go into all the world and preach the good news of cre and to all creation. Now, we're right here in Aiken, South Carolina, and it's kind of hard to remember um, to go out in all the world, especially as, as children, but we have several different ways. You know that once a year we, we um, send out... Uh, shoebox for the shoebox ministry during Christmas time and that's our way of spreading the good news to children in in other parts of the world and even just by me watching you and you watching me through um, social media or through the website or through technology we are able to still go out and preach the world preach the good news about Christ and that is the beauty of technology is that you can still communicate and get the message through so Jesus's word will not stop just because we're not meeting here physically. So he tells us to go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Also in Romans 10, chapter 14th and 15th verse, he says, how then can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they were sent? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news? And to paraphrase that for you, it's if you haven't, if you can't, how can you call on someone you don't believe in? And how can you believe on something, someone, something or someone that you have not heard? And how can you do that without a preacher? And you have to be, if, and you have to be sent in order to preach. How beautiful is, are the feet of those who bring the good news? It is great, it brings God great joy to know that his word is going forth and that we're spreading it to others. And so with that, 
I have a piece of candy in my hand, and this piece of candy represents one child that comes to children's church. So if we have children's church and we reconvene, when we reconvene, if there's only one child that comes, that child gets the good news. And that child, when they're after church and they on the ride home, they ask, they tell their parents what they learned in children's church. When you go home, you tell the good news to a friend about Jesus Christ. And you invite that one friend to come to you the next week. So one piece of candy represents the first kid. And then I'll take out another one because the next Sunday, you, the one that you invited is going to come to Children's Church. And then now you have two. And then when those two, when those two, you and the other person go the next Sunday and you tell other friends, then now you invite them and tell them the good news. Then now there are four more. And then when you go, and then when you go again and you tell the good news to the other people, those four, and adding on, then we have more. Because each one of those children goes spread the word and spread the gospel to other children. And that goes grows on and on and on. And as and before you know it, you have over 30-something people or 30-something children when it all started with just one, just by telling someone the good news. And so that's just like it is here. We're not meeting physically, but through technology, you have the ability to invite, to share, to share with others. So this is just not only for children. Uh, we as adults as well, we can tell the good news to others. Like, hey, we have a virtual Bible study during the week. We have children's church. We have Sunday school message. And you share it with your friends or you invite them or you have them to follow you. And as they follow you, they tune in. And before you know it, we have grown and grown and grown exponentially. And God's word has spread out throughout the world. And that's what he wants us to do. How beautiful are the feet to those that carry the good news. Have a great week. And as always, obey your parents. Have fun, but, but um, play safely and social distance. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. We're thanking God for another day, another day he has given us because we didn't have to do it. Today, our Sunday school lesson will be Wisdom's Feet. Our printed text is Proverbs chapter 9, verses 1 through 18. And before we get started, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you for all that you've done, Lord God. Thanking you for another day, Father God. Thanking you, Father God, for life, health, and strength. Then, Father God, we won't fail to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor, because every praise belongs to God. Amen. The aim for change. By the end of the lesson, we will compare and contrast the call of promised wisdom with that of folly. Desire to walk in the path of wisdom and receive its benefits. Avoid the perils of foolishness and grow in the fear of knowledge of the Lord as the first step of walking in the way of wisdom. Keep in mind, forsake the foolish and live and go the way of understanding, Proverbs 9, 6. We have three sections for today. Wisdom, invitation to the banquet, verses 1 through 6. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, verses 8 through 10. And follows invitation to the banquet, verses 13 through 18. Well, let's start with verse 1. Wisdom has built her house. She has turned out seven pillows. She has killed her beasts. She has mingled her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent forth her maidens to Christ upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let them turn in, in hither. As for him, the want understanding, she says to him, Come eat my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. It is wisdom and foolishness are personalized as rival young women who give out invitation to banquet to their house. Lady Wisdom builds a house. It is supported by the seven stone pillars. 
The number seven in the Bible often represents completeness and perfection. Wisdom House is also elegant and spacious. Wisdom has prepared a feast with slaughtered animals and mi mixed wine, and has well set the tables for the guests. The wine was mixed with water to s decrease the likelihood of drunkenness, also to make the wine last longer. After this, she sends out her maidens to bid the simple to come to the banquet. The simple refers to those who lack judgment, maturity, and experience. They are subject to seduction by the foolish woman. When we do not know right from wrong, we can be easily fooled. So it is important to accept the invitation to wisdom to come to the feast she prepares, which leads us to maturity, insight, and life. Wisdom has done her work, and now she cries out from the place of the city. It is people's response to make the party possible. She is calling out for simple who lack understanding. She is looking for those who are hungry for wisdom, those who know their hunger and are humble enough to seek wisdom. She is calling out <clears throat> for them who, who can be fed. Her food and wine will give them wisdom. It is for the good of their advice for them. Oh, the banquet here has some interesting par parallels to the banquet Jesus described over in one of his parables over in the book of Luke. The second section, verses 8 through 9. Reprove not a scorer, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will get, get yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Wisdom reflects to the behavior of a scorer versus the wise. The scorer is very arrogant and self-centered. They do not like anyone to criticize them, so they only respond with hate toward others. However, a wise person will appreciate the reprimand given and love and gift of the giver. The wise enjoy instruction because they want to become wiser and learn more. Of course, wisdom began with fear of the Lord and knowledge of the Holy One is in sight. This is where life begins, the fear of the Lord. Back then and even down today, wisdom began when we choose to live our lives with the, an awareness that God gives how we treat one another and the earth that he gives us to steward. Wisdom happens when we realize that the way we deal with life in general reveals whether we reveal God or not. And of course, reverence is worship that enables us to hear wise things and sayings of the Spirit. Submission to God is the first step toward a wise life. Oh, are you a marker or a wise person? You can tell by the way you respond to criticism. Instead of it tossing back or uh, put down, Retraw, when rebuke, listen to the criticism. This is the path of wisdom. Wisdom becomes when knowing God, he gives insight to living because he created life. To know God is not to ju just to know facts about him, but to stand in awe of him and have a fellowship with him. Oh, do you really want to be wise? Our third and last se section here. Father's invitation to the banquet, verses 13 through 18. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing, for she sitteth at the door of her house on the seat in the high place in the city to call passions who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither, and as far as him that wanteth understanding, she says to them, Stolen waters are secret. The bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth that the deal are there, and that he guess, that her guests are the depths of hell. A foolish woman's invitation to her banquet is direct contrast to the wise woman's invitation. The woman's loud and symbolic and adulterous person. She lacks judgment and is ignorant. The foolish woman does not even try to hide what her intentions are. She sits, at the right, she sits right at the door of her house to call the people in who are passing by. 
She intends to grab the attention of those who are gullible, convince them to come in to her banquet. Lady Folly does not even work. Instead, she steals whatever she gives her guests. In contrast to the woman, to the wise woman's feast, the foolish woman offers stolen water and bread eaten in secret. These are reference to the illicit sex. She claims that stolen water is sweet and that the bread eaten is secret and pleasant and entices her, the young men of her secret rendezvous. However, after momentary joy, she lets them realize that there is no life where they are. The people come to her banquet, do not realize enjoying her feast will lead them to the place of death. It is very important to stop and think about the consequences of sin before we yield into temptation. We often make decisions based on what looks good, great to us today, even though it may lead us to destruction. That is what folly does. It wants to deceive us to do what feels good. Today, at expense of what will be helpful in the future. One sin leads us to want more. Sinful behavior seems to be more exciting than that Christian life. Don't be deceived. Sin is dangerous. Before reaching for the forbidden fruit from the take long go, look at what happens to those who eat it. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your already blessed word. Continue to bless us, Father God. Keep us in the hollow of thy hand. And Father God, we won't fail to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Thanking you for this another section, Lord God, where we do your command, where we study to show ourselves approved. Then, Father God, thank you. I know we do our uh, social gathering uh, in a distance, Father God, but you say in your word, let us not neglect gathering together who some are in the heavens of God. So we gather together today, Father God, socially, that we continue to follow your command. We won't fail to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, because every praise belongs to God. Amen. May you still love the name Jesus. He's still opening doors for me, making my way where there's really none to see. Always lifting me up whenever my spirit is down. Always fighting my battles. And right in my wrongs, always bearing my burden, always setting me free, always watching out for you and me. I still love the name Jesus. Oh. my battles, and 
that he's right in my wrong always lifting my burdens always setting me free always watching out for you and me oh i still love the name jesus Good morning on this another day of worship, on this another day of virtual worship, as we come to share uh, a word from the Lord. Pray that you have your Bibles with you, and if you will, turn with me to uh, the book of Ephesians, the Ephesians letter, uh, chapter number five, beginning at verse number 15 through 17. I'm going to read two translations in your hearing and we'll basically deal with the NIV version of the text. The King James Version says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The NIV reads this way, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. 
Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Now, this morning, I want to use as a subject of thought, stop wasting time. Stop wasting time. You know, if you really think about it, uh, time is a very precious thing. You know, once it's gone, <laughs> you cannot get it back. Uh, well, think of it this way. We will never relive yesterday nor the days before because they are past and gone. You cannot retrieve any of that time. You know, with that thought in mind, uh, too many people live life wasting time. Uh, recently, I read, I read an article in reference to productivity, time management, and it was titled, 29 Ways You're Wasting Time Today. Uh, I would like to share a few of the ways from that article, one that we can apply to everyday living and not just working. Uh, a couple of things that I picked out of the list uh, was complaining. You know, no one gets... Uh, what they want by whining all the time. And as believers, we, we, we should not be, be whiners. Uh, gossiping, it's, it's never, it never gets the work done. And as, as believers, we ought to be sharing uh, more of God's word and encouraging one another more so than, than gossiping. Uh, another one uh, that I picked out of the list says, hanging out with negative people. Uh, you've got to be careful because attitude is contagious. Uh, you've got to surround yourself with folks uh, who are going in the direction that you're going in. You need to surround yourself with folks who love the Lord and, and study God's word in order that you might grow. Indecision was another one that was on the list. Making decisions uh, or life will make them for you. We have to make godly decisions, wise decisions. Another one that was on the list was fighting with others. You know, we must learn how to agree and, and disagree and skip the fighting and learn how to love one another, even though we may not agree on everything. But one thing we ought to agree on is the fact of who God is and about the love of God. Uh, another one that was on the list was, say, was solving the same problems again. You know, we, we've got to learn how to address problems the godly way and apply what we've learned. So those were just a couple of things that I picked off of that long list that we could actually apply to, to everyday living uh, that would help us uh, not to just be wasting our time. You know, Dr. Tony Evans has a quote that, that I want to share. Uh, Dr. Evans says, most of us will watch the weather report to get an expert opinion on the weather. But then we uh, follow mere human opinions about, about life rather than turning to the heavenly channel to get God's viewpoint. Oh, that, 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 that quote by, by Dr. Evans has stayed with me. We'll listen to the weather man and we'll follow uh, the weather uh, man's uh, advice. You know, get umbrellas, uh, stay in and do this and do that. But when it comes to everyday living, we will not turn to the channel, the God's channel, for the instructions of life. You see, when we look at uh, this text this morning, uh, the sermon text, we find that the, the Apostle Paul was writing to the Ephesian church. And he writes to them because he is concerned about their well-being. He had received a report about the Ephesian church while a prisoner in Rome. It is believed that the Ephesian letter is one of Paul's prison letters. You see, this letter, this letter was not written to counteract heresy or to confront any specific problem. Uh, Ephesian is a letter of encouragement. In it, Paul describes the nature and appearance of the church and the challenges believers and challenges the believers to function as the living body of Christ on earth. In other words, here on earth, we are to be God's representatives, and we are to be functioning in a way that lines up with God's word. You know, when we look at this, you see Paul, in it, Paul describes the nature and appearance of the church, and the challenges uh, the believers 
they, they must align themselves with God's word. You know, in our sermon text, Paul warns us not to waste time following the ways of the world. And let's walk through the text, and, and we won't, won't be long. Right there in verse 15, it says, Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. That's the NIV version of the text. Here, Paul is telling them we, we must live not as unwise people, but as wise. The question then one may ask is how? Well, by, by making the most of the time God has given us. For all of us, we only have a certain amount of time here on earth, and, and we should not waste any of that time because none of us know the time that we really have. Only God knows the real time that we have. You see, many people live unwisely lives based on the word of God. In other words, they live against the text, against the word of God. Uh, we must understand that we are to live wisely and not unwisely. You know, shacking is living unwisely. Sex outside of marriage is living unwisely. Drug and alcohol use, <coughs> uh, that we do it and it becomes abuse, is living unwisely. You know, constantly lying and not being truthful is, is living unwisely. No relationship with the true and living God is living unwisely. Many of us, we misuse the time God has allot allotted us doing everything we are capable of doing outside of God's will. So we must live a life that is pleasing to God. And the guidelines to a life lived that pleases God is found in God's word. And some of us, it seems we can never find time for God. But now we can find time to gossip. We can find time uh, before the coronavirus hit uh, for football and basketball and baseball and soccer games and all those things. Uh, the mall. Uh, and even now, we can watch TV all day long. And uh, we can play the lottery every day. But we cannot find time for God or to do the work of God. <coughs> Notice in verse 16, it says, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. See, don't waste your life because we are living in evil days. We must learn how to maximize our time. We should not be wasting time doing all the worldly things and forgetting the things that God so commands us to do. You know, Hebrews 10, verses 24 through 25, it's a word that is a call to persevere in our faith. And it tells us, beginning in verse 24, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Three, three important things right there in that text alone. First thing, it, it tells us that, that we as believers, we are to spur one another on toward love and good deeds. In other words, we, we ought to be encouraging. We ought to be pushing. Uh, we ought to be leading and guiding. Secondly, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. I, I know we can't come together right now physically because of the coronavirus, but... <clears throat> The church is a living organism, and even through virtual worship, even through phone calls, uh, texting, um, we can still stay in contact with one another in order that we may be encouraging to each other. He says, thirdly, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Right there. We must persevere in our faith if we're going to not waste our time, and it takes others to help us to be all that God would have us to be because we need encouragement on this journey. What, what we must understand is that when we neglect to study with other believers or fellowship with them, uh, whether it be physically, meeting together, or virtual worship or study, uh, we give up on the encouragement and help of other Christians. I don't know. I don't know how many times 
in my Christian walk, uh, I have spoken to others who they did not even know how they may have encouraged me through the words and things that they shared in their walk with God. Uh, when we don't come together and talk with each other, uh, we miss out on the opportunity to share our faith and to strengthen one another in the Lord. And that's why, and that's why as, as believers, even during this, this, this pandemic, that we're not to give up on conversating and talking with one another and virtual worship and virtual Bible study and all of those things and texting because we still need all of the encouragement that we can get. Well, let us look at what we do with our time if we just did the minimum. You know, there's, there's 24 hours in a day, there's seven days a week, which comes out to 168 hours, and 10% of that is something like 16.8. If we round it off, it's like 17 hours. Well, if, if we just did Sunday school, let's say that's one hour. If we, we did Bible study, maybe an hour, hour and a half, and, and if we did worship, uh, two hours. All of this is uh, before um, COVID-19. Um, we were able to, to actually do these things, but now we have to do them virtually. Uh, we're only talking about 4.5 hours. That's not even 10% of the time that God, of all the time that he allows you and I to have in a week's time. So we've got to learn to make great use of our, of our time. But you see, but we, 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 we won't dedicate the minimum to God but we'll dedicate more time to the world. Paul warns us that the days are evil. And anything can happen during these evil days. So we must remain in the will of God at all times. Some of us, some of us are just wasting our time. Verse 17 says, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Too many of us. Uh, wasting our time, uh, the text says, uh, living foolishly. Uh, we live life uh, like fools when we live outside of the word of God. Uh, I'm here to remind you that Psalms 119, 104 through 105 says this, through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We get understanding from God's word. We get guidance from God's word. You see, ignoring the fact that God has his eyes on us, and God knows if we are wasting our time. He knows what we can do. He knows what we are unable to do. And he knows what we won't do. I must remind us all, it's foolish to live a life without God. It's foolish to be uh, disobedient to the call of God. It is foolish not to serve the Lord while you have a chance. Yes, we must serve him uh, while we're still in our right mind. We must serve him while the blood is still running warm in our veins. We must serve him while we have good health because nighttime is coming. We must serve him while we're still able to move and have our being. Yes, stop wasting time. Nighttime is coming when no man can work. The folks of old would put it this way. Don't get caught with your work undone. <clears throat> we must stop wasting our time. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the time that you've given us. We thank you for this time. And now, Lord, help us to be obedient and to use all time that you give us wisely. And even as we're going through this pandemic and <clears throat> the other issues of life, help us to make best use of our time, that we will live wisely and not unwisely, that we will abide in your word. Again, thank you for the time you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>